All right, some of you with a good eye are going to notice our configuration has changed here. What's happened while we've had the video off is I've got a couple of one and a half liter body shells and it's always good once you get your axle set up take your body shell set it on there and basically eyeball where the axle points are that you've got on your chassis jig see if they match your body shell. This is a BRM so we've actually shifted our wheelbase from 90 inches to 92 inches. It seems to work for the BRM and for this Porsche. Actually the Porsche looks like it's probably going to be closer to about 93 inches. Now since I unfortunately have no idea what kind of body shell Lim is going to put on his car I am going to go there. Ken had recommended building it to 90. I looked a little short for the BRM, or I'm sorry, yeah, a little short for the BRM, quite short for the, uh, for the Porsche. So we'll kind of bump it out to be a good middle spot between what Ken recommended and what looks to be a fairly long wheelbase car like this Porsche here. All right, but, and that's always a good step to do. The last thing you want to do is build your chassis and find out your wheelbase is wrong. It doesn't fit your body shell. And it's a good thing to check because, you know, you're going to be, this dimension for your wheelbase is probably some research you've done on the internet. It's some manufacturer information that's out there. Uh, the body shell may not be exactly right. So you set this all up, build to that inch wheelbase, and you may find out that the manufacturer, your body shell, had their wheelbase wrong. So you definitely want to check that, make sure it looks right, before you continue with your build and that looks pretty good for that BRM so we've ended up with a 92 inch wheelbase now at this point. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is actually bend our chassis rails and we're going to build that out of a piece of 055 or 55 thousandths piano wire. And like I said before, it's important that this material is clean. I'm going to clean this with some sandpaper. You can use sandpaper, you can use an abrasive pad, uh, but you want to make sure that the material is clean, nice and shiny. That way you know that uh, your solder is going to have a good bond there. Alright, I'm going to take my wire bender. I'm going to put a bend and I'm in about eh, a couple inches from the end and we're just going to squeeze this wrench give us a bend somewhere about 60 degrees above the vertical roughly. And what that's going to do is form one of our chassis rails. So that uh, that's going to lay in here just like this, solder to one of those spherical bearings. Alright, so let me go ahead and get those finished and laid out on the jig and then we will uh, go on to our next step. All right, where we're at right now is we've inserted some pins in our chassis jig. Now since this car is going to use an FF050 motor, we basically want a half inch of clearance on the inside of the two chassis rails. So these pins help locate those rails on the center line at the width we need. Alrighty, and they're a little bit shorter than the 16th inch pins that are used on the front axles and that's so that they're not quite as much in your way. Alright, now we need to actually tie those down. So we're going to take this little nut here, we're going to slide that down inside this rail, take this eighth inch threaded post, screw that in there. Alright, we're going to shifting over our bushings in the back. We're going to slide in our chassis rails like so. Get them up against our posts and drop this plate here on top of that post and put on our thumb screw. We're not going to tighten that yet. Okay, what we're going to do is going to locate our bushings to 
where they will be in line with our two chassis rails. Scoot them over here and basically line everything up so that the chassis rails are a half inch apart parallel with each other that the rails are touching the back outside edge of our spherical bushings that they are vertical and we're going to tighten this down to tie that all into place we're going to pause the video for a second while I just finish eyeballing this and then we'll come back to the next step. Alright, we've basically got it so that our chassis rails touching our posts, which keeps them at a half inch apart, on line with the center line of the jig. And we've got our spherical bushings lined up and touching the angled upward movement of our chassis frame rail. Don't worry about the length of these at either end, honestly, because we're going to be cutting these pieces off once we get to that point, once we've got everything pretty well soldered up. All right, the next thing we need to do, though, is make our front chassis plate. So we've got a piece of half-inch 032 or 32 thousandths brass stock. And basically, that's going to lie in here, and that is going to actually support a collet that will be used as our guide flag mounting point. So essentially what we're going to do is take another 332nd collet and we're going to solder that to the center line of this piece of brass tubing. So I'm simply going to take my micrometer and bump it to the inch measurement now, wind this out to 250 thousandths and tighten it down and I'm just going to use it and scribe a line down the center. I'm going to do it from both directions that way if something's off a little bit we still have a line that of course is right down the center because you just have a fatter line basically but uh, but they will be an equal amount from either side so consequently our scratched line is down the center. Now what I'm going to do is take a moment and I'm going to drill a 3 32nd inch hole in this piece of brass and uh, which matches the inside diameter of our collet. So I'm going to do that on my drill press and I'll be right back. Alright, we've got our brass plate with a 3 32nd inch hole on the center line. This piece is a bit long and awkward to work with so I'm just going to for a moment bring it up here, locate the hole in the plate to where I guesstimate I'm going to want to put the guide flag and just kind of get an idea how long I want to make it and I'm going to take my nibblers here and just cut it to a workable length. All right, we've got that cut down, and as I said before, if you take anything out of this tutorial class, you want the material clean. So I'm going to take my Dremel tool and smooth off the burr where I drilled the hole. I'm going to clean up both sides. got it nicely cleaned up. Now, this is going to end up in here and soldered to these two rails. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to take this tool, run it down both sides of the material, the front and the back side of that side of the plate, turn it around, run it down the front, and the back side of this side of the plate. Okay, you can easily tell by looking at it whether you've been successful in cleaning it up. The thing I'm going to do is just run it just down the edge. Okay, what we're ultimately going to be doing here is, and I have a piece of 
332nd inch aluminum a piece of wire in it to give it some strength and I'm going to take that hit it with my pencil put a little graphite on there and these are basically all Wainert's building tricks what we're going to end up doing is, and I've got a little extra hole here that was just drilled into the jig and we are going to put that 332nd inch pin in there drop the plate on and I need to go back to my drill press and clean that up a little bit and sanding the burrs down we've kind of closed the hole up so let me drill that open it up so that'll fit and we'll be right back alright we've got our half inch wide 32 thousandths of an inch thick brass plate here 332nd inch hole right down the center and this is another collet 332nd inch ID and these are chrome plated or maybe nickel plated some sort of plating on them and you need to take your tool so I just used my Dremel tool sander on the end and I've sanded off the plating so that I can actually see basically the brass this is actually fabricated for brass material I can see the brass color and what we're going to do is and actually yeah, no, it looks good. I couldn't tell real well in the light. We're now ready to do our first soldering step. Now what I've got here is soldering flux. Basically something that is an acid that will clean the material and allows your solder to work better. So we're going to take a little bit of that and we're going to put it all over here. Don't worry if you got too much, it's not a problem. Too much is probably better than not enough. So we're just going to spread it around with our stick. And now we're going to take this collet right way up, drop it on here. Now I'm going to line it up so that the hole and the hole in the front of the collet is the hole that would normally be where the set screw is. So we've got that down there and as you can see this pin now conveniently locates everything on the center line of our piece of brass stock. Alright, I'm now going to take my silver solder and you want to use silver bearing solder. You do not want to use like lead solder that you would normally use to say solder wire together. That's what we're going to use to actually build this chassis. I just like to spool it out. This is uh, 15 thousandths of an inch thick. Ken tells me I probably should have gotten something a little thicker, but the next size up was pretty thick. And the problem is, is the wire gets thicker and you're feeding it in. The solder gets thicker and you're feeding it in. You've got more material that you need to heat up. And uh, if anything, heat is important so that you can continue to get a good, solid soldering bond. Now, I've got a little soldering station over here with my tip. I happen to have it set at about 750 degrees right now. What I'm going to do is just feed a little solder into here. And basically all I'm doing is putting a little ball of solder on the end of the tip. And the reason that's done is because the tip is so small that when you put it to the material, you've got a small surface area for heat transfer. So you just want to take it melt a little solder on there give yourself a little ball on there alright we're going to place that right down into the joint where the collet meets the brass we're going to let it heat up and we're going to start flowing this material in and get it soldered in place uh, they come around the back side here and it takes a while to heat it up and sometimes your solder will get stuck if you're a little too quick on it but all right, there we go. We're starting to feed some solder and uh, kind of bring some heat around this way. And we're going to just let that flow in underneath it. Once you get it really hot right, you can even actually feed the solder on the side opposite of where your soldering tip is. All right, we've got that well soldered in place. Stop for a minute, let that cool off definitely given enough time to cool off but what we've essentially done is soldered our collet to our plate it's on the center line of the plate which is important because that means that your guide flag will be on the center line of the collet
car. All right, while this is cooling, I'm going to explain the next step I'm going to perform, and it'll be done off screen. We are going to open up this hole now from 3 32nd of an inch to 1 8 inch. And the reason we're going to do that is, is because we're going to be, just as you saw earlier, we slid a nut inside the center slot of the chassis jig. We're going to slide another nut in there. We're going to run this threaded post, which has been turned down to an eighth inch in diameter on the top half of it. And that way then, when we slip our brass plate over our post, it's got an eighth inch diameter. We have an eighth inch diameter of a collet and a brass plate, so that'll accurately locate that. When this is slid in, basically all you do is, is you use finger tightness too. Do not use any tools to tighten down these set screws that are working in the center slot of your chassis jig. We're just going to slide this back to roughly where we think we're going to need it. And when we tighten down the center post, it's going to go down, bottom out at the bottom of the channel in the center of the chassis jig. And that'll lock that in place. So we're going to go ahead and drill that hole. And the other thing I'm going to do is radius off the front of this brass plate now. We've got a lot of extra material out there. In fact, what I'm going to do is just pull this off, pull that out. As you can see, it came right out by, uh, with our aluminum tube. The fact that we had some graphite on there from our pencil. i throw that back in there. Now, I'm going to go to my grinder, my sanding disc, and I'm going to use that to remove this material on the front of this piece of this plate. But because that can put a lot of heat into it, and if you get enough heat, you can actually loosen or, or melt your solder and debond it. Trust me, I have done that. So I'm going to take my nippers here, and I'm going to remove a lot of this material now so that I am spending as little time as possible grinding it to shape. So nip away at this. Basically what we're going to end up with, and I think a lot of you guys will recognize what it's going to be here in just a second, but it's going to be roughly triangular in shape. That way when our guide flag, guide flag post goes up inside here, the triangles will actually work as the stop as the guide flag rotates from side to side. So I'm going to finish shaping this and I'll be right back. All right, while well, off screen we did a couple of things. We profile to this plate so that it now will allow the guide flag to pivot on it. And I've opened up the 3 32nd inch hole to 1 8 inch, which matches the diameter of our post here. Now, 8 uh, inch is still not the final size you're going to use for your guide flag. Uh, so, and I drilled this out using a unibit, which I kind of like because the shape of the unibit doesn't allow it to catch the material and spin it out of your fingers and cut you up like uh, some of the scars I've got on my thumbs as I learned from an earlier time how to avoid that situation. So, but otherwise I would have snapped a guide flag in there and showed you. But essentially what we've done is, is we're going to end up with our pivot point for our guide flag and what ends up basically being the stops that restricts the left and right rotation of the guide flag. Now what I'm going to have to do here is remove these two pins in the front here because they are now in our way for the location of our plate. And if you remember before, we cut the plate a little bit long so that we can figure out its final dimension here in a moment. All right, so I have slipped the plate over the hole of our post slide this back. All right, we're actually going to uh, do something here and this is convenient with the way this jig worked out. We're going to put a couple of pins on the outside right here to locate the guide rails. Now the good thing is it should be pretty well tied down with the clamp here. But I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of these short pins, stick them in here, and locate these axle rails by the outside. So there we go. I'm going to need to pull these two out because they were 
Actually, yeah, I'm going to pull these two out because they're preventing the location of our. And in fact, I'm also going to move them to our outside holes right there. Okay, now basically we got to figure out how long we want this plate. So what we're going to do is take our FF050 motor and now the motor shaft has not been cut to length yet but we're going to locate the motor about roughly where it's going to end up inside there. Now what you've got to take into account is you are probably going to cut some of your motor shaft off. You're going to press your pinion on and you're going to have of course that pinion needs to match up with the outside diameter or the outer edge of the crown that will ultimately go on the car's axle. So if you even wanted to kind of look at it a little closer, here's a 23 tooth uh, slotted and uh, so it looks like we hold that on center with the axle and figure out about roughly how much of the pinion we want clear of the bushing that's on the pinion bushing of the motor. Actually, right about there looks pretty good. So now I'm going to push this back to about where we want it. And again, since I'm not sure what kind of body shell limb is going to use, I'm going to err on the safe side and that's going to be to put our pivot point for our guide flag up Eh, just in front of our axle. Now I've got an idea roughly what I need to do here and I'm going to cut the plate. I'm going to probably remove about another quarter inch of the plate. You can see we're probably going to end up with about a quarter inch clearance then between the motor and what will be the final back edge of the plate. So I'm going to take this over to my little micro cutoff wheel. We're going to cut that to length. Clean that cut up with our sanding disc and then we're going to put that into location as well. Plate cut to the length we needed. The end is squared up by eyeball. It doesn't need to be perfect. That's not real critical there. We're going to drop that over the post of our guide flag locator pin. Lined up here. There we go. That fits nicely between our two rails. I'm going to push this back to where I want it and then again using finger tightness do not use any tools on this you tighten down the uh, this pin to locate the, uh, the front guide flag location so I kind of got that where I want it snug down all right, we're ready to do some soldering here. And what we're going to do is take our flux, we're going to put it down both sides of the rail here. So what we're now going to do is solder this plate to both rails. So right, let me get that motor out of the way. There we go. So we're just taking the flux and spreading it along this joint where the two pieces of material meet. Alright, we've got that done and my uh, soldering gun is nice. I've got one with an adjustable temperature for the tip and because we are heating a lot of material, the blast brass plates in particular, I've actually cranked my temperature up to about 850. That's what I found. Seems to allow me to get this to flow in nicely. So, we're just going to again clean my tip on my sponge on my soldering station melt a little blob on the end of our soldering iron so that we get better contact to the material. Let that heat up. And we're still coming up to temperature here. Okay, we're now ready to solder this into place. So I'm going to put the iron 
down here where the two pieces of material meet. Take it nice and hot, wait for it, and start feeding in the solder. Solder the rail, and as you can see, go too fast. You can stick your solder, get that hot again. There we go. So, give it time to get plenty hot. It's easy to get carried away here. And try and do it quicker then it's really ready to start taking the solder. Alright, so we're working that solder there. Take it underneath here. Look around the other side of this pin. Yeah, come on. There we go. Alright, so we're going to stop the video for a second. There's no sense you watching me solder both sides of this. And we're going to come back when we've got that finished. We've got both sides soldered. And I'm just keeping this joint hot all along there. And make sure it flows in well across the material. So we've got that soldered into place. Alright, our next step is to actually solder the front axle tube to the chassis. And we're going to do that in a couple of ways here. We're going to actually, we're going to support it from the front and from the back. So, I am now going to take a piece of wire and what I'm looking for is something about, eh, I'm going to say somewhere around 50 thousandths again. We're going to go back to our 50 thousandth material here. And we're going to use that, and we're going to bend a couple of the brackets. So we're going to pause. There it is. There's our 50 thousandths. We're going to bend this into some stock, cut it to length, and I'll show you what we did and why.